Thank you. Are you sure you won't come in? Well, I'm tempted, but... No, I, I've got to get back, change my clothes and open the shop. Oh, just look at us. Aren't we terrible, dirty stop-outs at our age? There's nothing terrible about it. It was lovely. It was a theatre, a hotel, and... and you. Well, I must say, I did have my doubts, but no. I had a wonderful time, too. Thank you. Good. Well, maybe we should do it again sometime. Um, Stratford? RSC, maybe? Oh, that would be lovely. Morning. Morning. You see, we've only been back five minutes and we'll be talk of the street. That and talk. You don't mean that. Maybe not, but that's how I feel. Still got that old kettle? I don't know. I think I threw it away. <sighs> anyway, I've nearly packed now, so I can move out at lunchtime, maybe before. Whenever. OK. And I thought I might pop back after school so we can let the kids know what's going on. What's going on? Mm -hmm. Well, that's one way of putting it. How do you mean? You want to ask David who he wants to live with, don't yes. you? Yes, you know I do. So that's what's going on. You want him to make an impossible choice. A choice that can only end up hurting him. Oh, what are you frightened of, Gail? Hmm? You frightened that he'll choose me? I'm frightened of the damage you'll do by putting him in the position in the first place. Oh, what's the problem? You're the one with all these legal leaflets, aren't you? So? So? That's all these things talk about. Keeping the child at the centre of the process. I don't believe it! You don't even go to the solicitors till this afternoon. You're already talking like one. Oh, don't be ridiculous. If you do this tonight, if you ask our son to choose between us, I'll never forgive you. Are you OK? I'm fine. I'll get some breakfast. There you are, love. That'll keep you going. Oh, thanks, Vera. So what is it you're doing? Hey, that looks really complicated. <laughs> to me, it counts. And you don't need to be Carol Borderman to know they don't add up. Mm -hmm. Hiya. Oh, hello. How's it going? Well, like I said, without those council contracts, I'm finished. But <laughs> all of them outstanding building accounts. And I've no way of paying them. Well, what about a bank loan? <laughs> You're joking, aren't you? I'm up to me neck as it is. No, I'm going to see me accountant in a minute, see if he's got any answers. Hey, don't worry. Sure it'll be all right. <sighs> do water into wine as well, do you? Right, lovey. There you go. See you again. And uh, remember what I told you, frequent washing. Won't do any harm. Bye. Honestly, her uh, hair. Hey, anybody think there was a water show? <laughs> hey, hey, where are you off to? I'm just a bit out shop. we run out of tea bags. Oh, right. Oh, yeah? Hey, where are you off this year? Then better don't move, Bogner. You what? On your holidays. Where are you going? So with him, he's not usually that moody. Uh, no, I don't know. Listen, stay here. Hold the fort for a minute. I've got to go and see Gail. Well, what's the matter? Is everything all right? No, I don't think it is. <sighs> it's one thing ignoring me on the plane, Mike. But we're here now. We've got to talk. We've got to decide what we're going to do. Mike, am I coming on with you or shall I book into a hotel? Mike? Right, fine. If that's the way you want it, I'll book into a hotel then, shall I? This is ridiculous. Linda, wait. Maybe we can sort something out. We'll have a coffee first. Go on. Oh. Anthony wore you out, did he? <laughs> Sorry? Well, all that sightseeing around York, uh, Oscar Wilde, Cobblestones, High Emotions, it, it, it's a potent mix. Ah. Uh, uh, what can I do for you, love? Just that, please, Rita, thanks. Right. Two twenty-five, then, please. Oh, thank you. Thanking you. This is Rita Sullivan. Yes. Oh, lovely. Thank you. Not a cheap bouquet. Mm. Looks like someone's got a secret admirer. Mm. No. Just a friend. 
I'll say. Of course it's a shock, love. He's gone. Nine years of marriage. Over. Just like that. Now listen to me. Listen. I know it's awful now, but it will get better. Honestly, this is the worst bit. How can you say that? Because it's true. Gail is gone. Now you can start rebuilding your life and doing what you want. It can't hurt you anymore. Ma'am, he hasn't even started. What do you mean? He wants to take David. He wants to fight me for custody. No, no, he can't. He's going to. He's going to see a solicitor this afternoon. But they won't let him take him, surely? I don't know. But he'll break my heart by trying. What do you reckon, eh? What, is it rent a wreck or something? Well, who cares? It's a classic, is this? Yeah, classic rust bucket. What do you know? It'll run for years, this beauty. You were saying? Oh, yeah. Hi. What did your accountant say? Uh, nothing I didn't already know. He reckons the first thing I've got to do is get rid of my house. Well, come. I need the capital to clear my debts. It's the ideal solution. A quick sale and I could make, whoa, 300 grand from it. Well, where would you live? <laughs> That's the least of my worries. Believe me, if it meant I could save the business, I don't mind keeping on a park bench. Check out this banging sound I've just heard. What, you and your car, Dennis and his bike? No wonder we're not getting any work done. Well, it's all right, T. I'll give you a lift with that if you want. Oh, you won't. But I've just heard it start knocking. Yeah, that'll be the sound of me banging your two heads together. Come on, get some work done. How are we going to fix this if you won't even talk to me? I've told you, I've nothing to say. Just tell me what you want me to do. I don't know. Well, at least tell me how you feel. Despite all the evidence, I'm not stupid. I know what some people think when they look at us. They think that you're a gold digger and I'm a stupid old fool that you're taking for a ride. But that never bothered me, never. I know it didn't. I used to feel so proud when I was with you. See a bloke look at you and I used to feel great. I was proud that I could be with a woman like you. Proud I could keep you interested. And you could feel like that again? No, I can't. It's gone. When we were on honeymoon and I'd see a bloke look at you, I'd think, hello, is he going to be the next one? Is he going to be the next man she's going to humiliate me with? And I was right, wasn't I? What about the barman, eh? The greasy little bloke with a ponytail. Spent enough time talking to him. Well, what do you expect? You weren't talking to me. Didn't stop you enjoying yourself, though, did it? Snorkeling, propping up the bar, laughing with your new mates. Didn't seem like you were missing me. Of course I was missing you. It was me flaming honeymoon, and my husband wouldn't talk to me, wouldn't sleep with me. Mike, you hardly even looked at me. There I was in the most beautiful place I've ever been in my life. And I may as well have been on my own. Well, what did you expect after what you did to me? Do you think I'd just forgive you? Think we'd be sitting under the palms, holding hands, pretending nothing had happened? No, I just wanted you to talk to me about what happened, about Mark. Don't! Don't even mention his name. Look, Mike, I don't know what else to say. I know how much I've hurt you, and I'm sorry. And I know it's going to take a long time to get over this. But I still love you. And I don't want this to finish. Not like this. Not here. Yeah, all right, all right. We can't talk here. Get your bag, we'll talk at home.
So, uh, you got a car then, Sam? Well, I never really found the need, actually, T. You're a mechanic. Of course you need a car. Any road, it changes your life. Oh, I. Yeah, go anywhere, see anything, and the birds love it. Here, Tyrone, can you give us a lift to Fresh Crows, cos I want a big shop? Yeah, no problem, Vera. Oh, you're a lovely lad, isn't it? <laughs> see, Sam, Tyrone's right. Get yourself a car, you get all the girls. <laughs> Shut up. What's this? It's my solicitor's address. She said your solicitor would need it. Right. <sighs> well, anyway, she talked me through my custody rights. She said it could be a lengthy process. Well, she'll line her pockets then, won't she? Oh, Gail, come Still, on. Compared to what you really intend to do to this family, I suppose bankruptcy is the least of my problems. Well, they're upstairs. Shall we get it over and done? Yeah, with? yeah. You're still going to go through with this. You're still going to ask David to choose between us. Well, I am the boy's father. I have got rights. And before you forget it, he's got feelings. And will you go, or shall I? What the hell do you think you're doing? I'm checking the mail. Well, let's get one thing straight, shall we? We came back here to talk, that's all. I know that. I don't think you can get your feet back under the table because you can't. It's not gonna happen. What's that? It's the wedding photos. They've sent us the proofs. Yeah. Well, you know where the bin is, don't you? You know, ever since the wedding, ever since Mark told me, I've been trying to understand it. Please, Mike, there's no point. Sitting here on that beach, I try to work it out and... Well, now I'm back here where it all happened and I still haven't got the answers. I mean, did I deserve it? I mean, was I a bad father? Did I beat you up? Was he a drunk? No, no, so why? I mean, why did you do this to me, Linda? Mike, there's no point in talking like this. It's over. It's history. How do I know that? Because I'm here with you. Now, and somehow, we've got to get over this. We've got to make a fresh start, and I know we can. We can. You know, deep down, I'd like to believe you. I really would. But I, I don't see how I can come to terms with this. Two people I love most in the world, the two people I trust with everything. I know, and I'm so, so sorry. I've never regretted anything so much in my life. I can't explain it, Mike. I don't know what I was doing. But please, you've got to believe me. Mark. Mark meant nothing to me. Don't you see that's even worse? How? Well, he may have just been a fling to you, Linda, but one of your little games, but... Well, to me, he was everything. My boy. My future. Now, because of you, I can never see him again. Oh, I'm starving. Is the only tea? What David, sit having? down a minute, will you? Your dad. We've got something we need to tell you. What's all this about? You moving out? Yes, I am. What are you talking about? Well, me and your mum have decided that it's best for everyone if I move out. No, no, you can't! David, I know this is upsetting for you, but uh, you know your dad and I haven't been getting on very well lately. Yeah, but I thought you were getting on better. I thought you said you were going to try and stay together. We have tried, but it's just not working. And uh, we think that everybody would be happier if we lived apart. Oh, please, though, I won't be happy. I want Dad to stay here. Yeah, I know you do, David, but... Well, we can't carry on as we are, can we? Always arguing, making everybody miserable. But you're not always arguing. We're not always miserable. Please, Dad, don't go. I'm sorry, son, but I, I have to. If you're going, I want to come with you. 
Do you? Yes, I do. Please, Dad, can I? Um, listen to me, David. You're going to have to stay here and look after your mum, your sister and Bethany. They need you No, here. I want to come with you. No, it's not possible. Listen to me. I'm only going to be around the corner. I'm going to move into a flat on Victoria Street, so you're going to see a lot of me. You're going to see me every day. In fact, you'll probably see me more than you already do. It's going to be all right, son. I don't want you to go. It's going to be all right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you early birds still awake? Uh, we're just about, yeah. I wish I had just done that. I hope I wasn't too indiscreet sending you the flowers. I don't want to add any more fuel to the gossip. Well, I did see Norris's ears prick up. <laughs> I, I'm sorry, I was passing the shop. I, I just couldn't resist it. Honestly, it doesn't matter. They're lovely. And the way I feel about you today, I'm beginning not to care. Who knows? <sighs> So, what's Dougie doing tonight? Oh, he's knee-deep in paperwork. He's decided he's got to sell his house to clear his debts. You're joking. No. Nope. And do you know what? I think I'm going to ask him to move in. Are you and Dougie ready for that? Only one way to find out. Anyway, Dougie's after a quick sale, so he won't have time to find anywhere else. And you know how I like my men. What, broke? No. Desperate. <laughs> If you say so, and listen, the way you took them corners, my heart were in my mouth. Oh, are you all right, Norris? I'm most certainly am not all right. I don't want to come out of work and have my ears assaulted with that racket. That's not racket. That's drum and bass. Drum and what? Well, actually, no, it's, uh, it's garage that. But whatever it is, it's kicking. Tyrone, when you start speaking English, let me know. Until then, you can turn it off. All right. Happy, are you? Ecstatic. Why are you asking? Just thought you'd like to know. Dougie's being forced to sell his house because of you. My heart bleeds for him. Still, it makes a nice change in finding out what it's like to be homeless. Maybe you were right, you know. Maybe you should start looking for another job. Why are you saying that? Because if Dougie has got to sell his house, then he must be in real trouble. Hmm. I was thinking about that this afternoon. Might play the long game with him. What do you mean? Well, you know what these businessmen are like. Brassic one week, loaded the next. I reckon if I stick by Dougie, show him I'm loyal, like. Might be worthwhile in the long run. Wish I had your face. Mike, just because of what's happened, doesn't mean we have to throw it all away. Linda, don't. Oh, come on. We're great together. We make a great team, you know we do. I can't. I won't walk away from this, Mike. I won't lose you. Bit late for that. No, it's not. We've only just got married. We've got a whole future ahead of us. We can't lose that because of one stupid mistake. But it was my son, Linda. My son. I know. And I was stupid, and I hate myself for doing it. But I can make it up to you. I can. Mike, please. You're the best thing that's ever happened to me. If I let you back into my life, how do I know I can trust you? You can, I promise. I know how close I came to losing you. I wouldn't risk it. All right, well, you listen. If I'm prepared to give you a second chance, no one must ever know what you two did to me. They won't. And if you ever, ever put me through something like this again, that's it, it's over. I won't, Mike. I promise. Does this mean you're prepared to take me back? We could take it just one day at a time, yeah? Mike? You all right? All right, one day at a time. Oh, Mike. 
You won't regret this. But I'm warning you, Linda. If you ever cheat on me again, or even ever lie to me, you're out that door and back in the gutter before you know it. All right, you two. We'll see you soon. See you soon, eh? Martin. What? Thank you. For not going through with it. This is all your fault, this is! David! No, it's all right. No, it's not all right. Don't talk to Mum like that. Why not? If you want to be so horrible, Dad never would have left. David, you just shut your mouth. It's all right, Sarah. Just let him go. No, it's not all right. Why'd you let him talk to you like that, Mum? He doesn't mean it. He's upset. We all are. It's been... He doesn't understand. Mommy, you're going to be OK. <sighs> yes, love. I'm relieved it's all over. Come and give me a hug. We'll look after.